everyone and once again welcome back to the chem school today we are going to talk about something very important in organic chemistry and that is what are nucleophile and electrophile now why are they important see when you talk about organic chemistry most of the time you will end up listening to okay fine this is a nucleophile and it is going to attack this electrophile this is an electrophilic center this is a nucleophilic center so to understand organic chemistry it is very very important or it is very very crucial to understand what is nucleophile and electrophile so let's get started so let's understand the first part and that is nucleophile so when you talk about nucleophile just look at the name just split it into two parts that is nucleo and file so your nucleo means nucleus while file means loving okay so it means they are nucleus loving right so anyone who is nucleus loving in chemistry we will say that they are electron rich okay i repeat in chemistry if a species is nucleus loving it means it is electron rich so you want to get stability so in organic chemistry how do you get or in chemistry how do you get stability okay it's by donating the excess okay or by gaining if you are deficient right so understand again so if we say it is nucleus loving or it is electron rich means to become stable it needs to donate donate its electron why because neutral species are always more stable so they need to donate the excess electron that they have okay therefore we say that they are electron donors right so i repeat nucleophiles are electron donors now when you talk about electron donors they can be of two types that is nucleophiles we will write nucleophile as nu that is the general symbol so nucleophiles can be broadly classified into two types that is you can have neutral nucleophiles or they can be negatively charged right so the time you say neutral nucleophile it means they are the species having excess of lone pairs okay so they are going to donate their lone pairs okay whenever it is needed so have a look when you talk about water you know that in oxygen you have two lone pair both the lone pair does not get donated at a time one will get donated okay so usually in chemistry you will see that water or oxygen will usually donate only one pair of electron ammonia nitrogen species or amines you can say primary secondary or tertiary amines the nitrogen will have lone pairs okay so they will donate this lone pair similarly if you talk about alcohol and alcohol also has oxygen so it will end up donating one pair of electrons even ether has r o r do you remember fine so even ether has oxygen so it can donate one pair of electron so this has sulfides okay so even this sulfur has two lone pair out of which one can be donated there are one more, few more species and i will write that you can talk about pph3 so this phosphorus has three phenyl rings attached so we know that phosphorus is pentavalent right so it has five electrons in the outermost shell out of which it is now sharing three with benzene right phenyl right so left is two electrons so again this phosphorus will have a pair of electrons this pair of electron can be donated okay so these are called as phosphenes and phosphenes are also neutral nucleophiles right similarly if you have a negative charge still you are electron rich and still you are a nucleophile so in negatively charged species you have oh minus which is called as hydroxide x minus uh, h minus sorry hydride x minus halide so halide you will have chloride bromide iodide fluoride and so on or minus alkoxides okay so we now know what are nucleophiles right now if you have a nucleophilic reagent in that case what it will do because it is a nucleophilic reagent it is electron rich it will now attack the electron deficient center that is electrophile so a nucleophile will now attack the electrophile in this process what will happen a new bond between nucleophile and electrophile will be formed the electrophile is now stable with no charge while the nucleophile will get a positive charge right so i hope you have understood what are nucleophiles and how they are classified and where do nucleophilic reagents attack in organic chemistry now when you talk about nucleophiles you will come across a special type of nucleophiles and that are called as ambidentate nucleophile let's understand what does that mean okay now have a look at one example first here is a cyanide ion in cyanide ion have a look at the carbon 
this carbon has a pair of electron that is negatively charged right now this carbon is negatively charged while this nitrogen also has a pair of electron so what can happen if you have an electrophile if you have an electrophile either the carbon can attack the electrophile forming a cyanide right alkyl cyanide let's say your electrophile is r plus okay so if r plus is attacked by c minus of cyanide ion then you will get alkyl cyanide but at the same time if this nitrogen is behaving as a nucleophile if this nitrogen forms a bond with your r plus then you will get alkyl isocyanide okay so this is the difference that this has two reactive sites they have two donor sites out of which either can be donated and this type of nucleophiles are called as ambidentate nucleophile right so rp nucleophiles having more than one donor site right are called as ambidentate nucleophile why because they have more than one reactive site so similarly you have other examples like dmso that is dimethyl sulfoxide okay so in dimethyl sulfoxide either sulfur can donate a pair of electron or oxygen can donate a pair of electron okay similarly in isothiocyanide sulfur can donate a pair of electron or the nitrogen can donate a pair of electron your carbon will not donate okay so have a look at this because carbon already has four bond so there is no excess electron left next nitride ion no2 right in this case either nitrogen can donate a pair of electron or the oxygen can donate a pair of electron so this type of nucleophiles are called as ambidentate nucleophiles so let's talk about the last type of nucleophiles that are the pi donor nucleophile so it is very clear from the name that the pi bond will be donated why because pi bond are also loosely held right because they are loosely held they can be donated wherever needed right so if the pi bond is getting donated right then it is behaving as a nucleophile because it is electron rich it is getting donated now you can also consider this as a neutral nucleophile many times you will see people saying that pi donors are also neutral nucleophile so in nuclear neutral nucleophile you can consider either lone pair is getting donated or the pi bond is getting donated so in alkenes you have pi bond in alkynes you have pi bond in aromatic rings also you have pi bonds right so in aromatic ring okay fine they are tightly held they are in resonance but still this type of pi bond can be donated okay now this thing will give rise to something like this okay right so if this is getting formed what will happen here you have already a hydrogen so this carbon has four bond that is not a problem but this carbon has lost one of its electron so there will be a new positive charge which is generated at this particular site okay so even benzene rings kind of structure can behave as a nucleophile so remember that aromatic rings are nucleophilic fine so i hope all the nucleophile and its types is very clear to you so now let's talk about what are electrophiles right so again we will talk about what is electro means electro means electron while phi we, file we said it means loving so electrophiles are electron loving species so if they are electron loving species it means they need more electrons so if they need more electrons it means they are electron acceptors why because they are electron deficient so they are electron acceptors okay now again we'll talk about this later let's talk about a type of electrophile usually you will have two types of electrophile that is you have neutral electrophile or you will have a positively charged electrophile the neutral electrophiles are generally the ones with incomplete outermost shell okay so till atomic number 20 you will say that they have incomplete octet okay and after atomic number 20 21 you will say that they have incomplete 18 electrons in the outermost shell or incomplete 36 electrons in the outermost shell and so on okay so let's see Now, if you talk about boron is the center, so boron has three electron in the outermost shell, right? And it is now sharing these three electrons with three fluorine. It means now it has only six electron in the outermost shell. So it means it requires at least eight to complete its octet. So it has incomplete octet, right? Similarly, if you talk about aluminium, right? Again, it has incomplete octet because the atomic number of aluminium is less than twenty. As simple as that. When you talk about this, is a carbene. This is very important again. So when you talk about carbene, again carbene has six electron in the outermost shell because see it is sharing electrons with 
two chlorine so if carbon is sharing electrons with two chlorine so each bond two electrons so two two four and you can see a pair of electron right so it means it has six electrons in the outermost shell so all this three will have six electron in the outermost shell therefore they have incomplete octet but when you talk about zinc the atomic number of zinc is 30 right it means they will have incomplete 18 electrons in the outermost shell right so again because all of them has incomplete electrons in the outermost shell right therefore they are going to behave as electrophile they will accept electrons when a nucleophile is going to attack them correct similarly if you have a positive charge this is very clear that i have a positive charge and i need more electrons so they are going to be strong electrophiles again so h plus proton right cl plus that is chloronium ion nr4 plus that is ammonium ion right and you will have this is called as carb cation right or carbonium ion so these are also good electrophiles now we know that if you have an electrophilic reagent right they are going to attack electron rich site but remember in organic chemistry the arrow will always start from the electron rich site and it will end to the electron deficient site although you say this statement but the never will the arrow will never start from the electrophile so just keep this in mind okay that is the reason i have started the arrow from nucleophile so the arrow will start from the nucleophile that electron will get donated to the electrophilic reagent and you will get a new bond formation again like the last one right so this was all about electrophiles and nucleophiles i hope this is very clear to all of you if you have any doubts please ask in the comment box and see you soon in the next class thank you